All the fans still up there. What's up guys? Russ with RWG Research here. Another day in paradise and uh, just going to give you an update on what's going on. Haven't been uh, able to really do a whole lot that I'm able to film and show. Like, you know, actually what I've been doing. Um, I've been doing some live show stuff and you can kind of view that stuff. And yeah, so it's been kind of crazy. Uh, but I kind of want to give you a quick general thing of what I've been doing with this VIC um, the other style while we're waiting on the course and um, yeah so well, I'll just go ahead and get started here uh, last time I talked to you guys and we talked about these cores that Don had sent me um, I went ahead and, and just uh, clamped them together like they are um, obviously when you put this together it's going to be the opposite one one way one the other and back and forth but for now for uh, what I was trying to do went and clamped them together and uh, kind of made sure they'd fit tight and try to straighten a lot of the edges anything that needed to be kind of flattened I went through and flattened them all and got that far and one thing I had mentioned to you I'm actually going to set this camera down one thing that I had mentioned to you was the fact that this here um, outside bobbin this particular outside bobbin was too big and would not fit on this core. Um, you can see right there if I've got it tight here that it hits on the other side. So I was going to make a whole new bobbin and make it smaller but instead what I've done is just milled a very fine flat spot. One on each side. See it right there. And uh, that allowed me to be able to fit this on here just like that so otherwise I couldn't get these on here now the other problem and I knew this was going to be a problem but I went ahead and did this anyway is I I uh, cut this out on the inside with a three-quarter inch drill bit and um, all the way through and I knew that the core material was going to hit the edges and I didn't really know how I was going to fix that um, see if I can get a close-up on this there you can see the there maybe it'll focus on me there you can see the grooves that I cut in it okay and those grooves I cut in there I was like how in the world am I supposed to cut those grooves in there for that core to stick through there well what I did is I took a three quarter inch um, rod like a like a, a square bar stock three quarter inch I knew that was the same, uh, really close to the same size as what this is. It's really close to three quarter. It's ever so slightly under. I took a three quarter inch bar stock, square bar stock, and I milled the end flat to where I could get razor sharp edges on it. And I literally just took that square stock, stuck it on top here, and just pushed it through, and it just peeled those corners out. I mean, I was overly excited because this is UHMW that I'm using. And UHMW does not cut well. It's really gummy and sticky, and when you machine it, you got to have a high speed or else it doesn't work very well. And um, the, that milled off end bar stock was was so sharp, it was razor sharp, and it just peeled off like butter. So I'll show you actually how tight this core actually fits, and um, it's tight. It's actually, it's actually a very good thing that it's tight. That means this thing will be held in place. Um, if it'll focus, you can see that it fits that tight. You can see this corner here. How that the the center fits in there that tight. I mean, it hits every corner. It fits perfect. And then, of course, this piece fits on here real nice. I might have to flip this around. Yep, just right. All right. And then, obviously, when I put these on here, they'll be opposite. One will be one way. One will be the other. Until I get them all on and clamp them down. You can see it's real, real nice and flat. Um, when I first was playing with these, they weren't, the, they weren't that flat because they're all hand cut. Don hand cut these, so they weren't, you know, perfectly flat. Um, and this I kind of bowed out. And I think what I'm gonna do is take the outer ones and put them on the inside, flip them over, and it'll, it'll actually push them all together, which would be good. 
But once I get these clamped down, um, I don't think that it's going to be a problem. So really quickly, that's what I wanted to show you on how I got around the problems that I had. I was pretty impressed with the bar stock thing. That worked out really well. And um, I'm going to be wrapping um, the wire on there. Um, one thing that I, I did want to mention to you guys, over at the forums there are two posts that I made. One has a bunch of general information on this particular VIC and how it's supposed to work and things and stuff. And the other thing is I just posted uh, yesterday and it basically uh, talks about the wire, the type, the sizes and stuff like this. And I'd like you guys to review that. Um, I'm not going to go through it in this video, it's too long, but I'd like you to review it and uh, give me your opinion on it. Uh, please reply to the post on the forums because that's where the information is posted. There's too much to reply on a YouTube uh, description box, okay? Or whatever. Too, it's not going to work out for you. So the other thing I did on the live show, this is sort of a live show update, I uh, got the gas processor out. I was really actually hoping to do some real tests and I didn't get that far. I had some problems. Um, one of the things I wanted to do is take this power supply, this is a DC 10,000 volt, and I wanted to apply the voltage across the gap. Um, and I wanted it to be DC. Well, the, the it's it, this power supply puts out a nice DC voltage at a high high voltage, but it's it's a low amperage, which I knew, and I just wanted to see how that was going to work out. Well, not the best. What I what I need you guys to do also is over at the EPG thread on the forums is post your ideas on how on, on this question right here and the question is um, what is the best way to break down um, nickel iron or cobalt into iron ions what's the best way to do that um, and, and simply and my my thinking one of the best ways to do that is with some sort of a TIG welder where you've always got that high amperage high voltage arc um, and it's you know it, that would be very that would be perfect for this application. I don't have anything like that. Um, if anybody's got any old TIG welder equipment that they're willing to donate towards this particular part of the process, just let me know. Um, you can send me an email. I'll leave it in the description box. Um, but you know, it's throwing out that out. I'm throwing that out there for you guys um, in case somebody might have something laying around that might might work for this. So think outside the box here, unless you think of something else that might work better. So one thing that I did, I didn't have a TIG welder. I had this regular welder. And it had some blown up diodes, and uh, I basically showed. Um, I started working on this, uh, replacing the diodes. Come on, you can focus there. I started replacing the diodes, and um, I uh, could not get these bigger diodes that I was going to replace the little ones. I was going to replace the little ones and put. Uh, I even got some here mounted still. Put some bigger diodes on here, not worry about the amperage that way. These are out of a 48 volt battery charger, really big, heavy duty. These are like 600 amps at like a thousand volts, so ridiculous. Um, so I was going to do that, and I had some issues. You can watch it on the live show. I was just too tired, I couldn't figure it out. I uh, it's a full wave bridge rectifier, but for whatever reason, I was having troubles with it. Nonetheless, I will deal with that another day. And uh, but when it was working with just half the power. I was able to, um, you know, create a, um, a uh, uh, basically malted metal. Uh, what I used actually was nails. These two nails right here. Um, now, this particular welder um, was not able to give me that high voltage arc. It was just able to, it was able to give me the uh, amperage I needed. Um, 30 volt DC at 85 amps and 60 amps. 21 volt DC. So I was able to get the power, but the high voltage arc I was not able to apply correctly. So I, I really need some sort of a TIG welder. I could possibly even use an arc welder, uh, like a, a stick welder. Um, and what I actually did was I hooked up the high voltage power supply to this um, output power here and then applied a very small gap and then what I did is hit it with the high voltage to try to jump the gap and then I wanted the uh, higher amperage DC to take over but obviously that's not going to create much of a uh, an arc at uh, that low of a voltage so I just went ahead and tried it because I, I had it my dad gave me this thing he got it somewhere it was scrapped uh, scrapped out because of the busted diodes it wouldn't weld very well so that's what I've been up to um, I will post 
at the end of this video, I'm going to attach some of the footage from the live show. Um, the arc, uh, the, uh, where is it at? This box over here. This is my um, box that I made for the AC side uh, when I was doing processing. I think it has to be DC, but here's my high voltage AC. This will, it's got two capacitors in here. It's a uh, neon sign transformer, 12,000 volts, and this capacitors will charge up to um, close to 50,000 volts and discharge. Now you can see the safety gap I have here because I blew up one in my basement. A few of you actually got to that link in my last couple of videos. Uh, one more thing else I did real quick. I did make this. Um, I just got tired of um, it's something I want to do for a long time. I got tired of trying to hold on to these gauges. So I just mounted them on here. And uh, if I get a couple more different sizes, I can stick them on there. Um, so that was the other thing I did during the live show. But I'm going to let you guys go and uh, add a couple of clips here on the end. Um, but yeah, um, there's been some uh, generous donations lately towards the research. And uh, just to let you guys know, some of that, uh, that funding will actually be brought back out to other um, YouTube users. Um, Tin Man is one of the people I would like to help with a few of his projects. And uh, some of those donations will actually be going towards some of his projects um, for his uh, exhaust generating electricity thing he's got going on there. Um, he will be open sourcing that. It's just a matter of he wants to finalize it and uh, make sure it's uh, all good to go the way he likes it. That's what he does and I think that's a good idea. He uh, finishes something to the end and then publishes what he does and I think that's a, that's a good way of going about it. Somebody wastes their time doing something. But uh, just to let you know. Alright Russ, uh, RW Research, I'm out. Enjoy these next couple of clips and uh, hopefully next time we'll get to some EPG testing. I was really, really looking forward to doing that and the gas processor of this particular one did not do what I wanted it to do. So, still got work to do, but uh, in the meantime while I'm waiting on parts, playing with this thing. Uh, but definitely go read that post over to forums, both of them. Alright, peace, enjoy. Thank you guys, much love to you all. See ya. Um, I wanted to mention something. A gentleman, his name is Russell, and imagine that, and he is building a laser EPG. And he has purchased some 99% pure cobalt uh, rods for his build. Um, I'm going to give you his YouTube name, and if you guys want to go uh, check him out and uh, subscribe to his channel for his updated videos, um, his YouTube username is 911stuff. And uh, there is his gas uh, chamber processor right there. Um, that's what it looks like from the side. So he's doing some really cool stuff. I uh, suggest you check it out. And uh, yeah. Thank you. That'll be pretty cool. 99% cobalt. Awesome. Okay. EPG testing and my sunburn. Not nice. Anyway, I'm uh, setting up this spark gap with my other... AC supply here. My safety gap. 12,000 volt neon sign transformer. And uh, really I just want to record this to show what it looks like under this particular power. Those are two nails. And the EMF coming off this is huge. Interfering with my camera and it was 8 feet away. So I'm going to hold this thing back and not get real close. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it on here. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and set up the other positive supply, 10,000 volts positive supply and see what that looks like. This is much, much lower voltage, but it's, an, it's a DC. Okay, so now I had to move these nails together and I've got this hooked up to a 10,000 volt positive power supply. Um, I was afraid that this wouldn't have enough juice. And really it doesn't have enough voltage or amperage. This is what it looks like. Really not, not what I'm looking for. So I guess I'm going to break out the uh, break out the uh, welder and pop some diodes in it. It's got some blown diodes. Somebody gave to me, and we'll uh, we'll try it again. <laughs> 